Greetings fellow Earthlings and welcome to a video that I've never really done before and in a way I don't think anyone else has done before but I can't really say that for certain because I couldn't be bothered checking but anyway this is going to be a review of the Steam reviews um, lots of people have left reviews for the game Ancestors Legacy um, some of them I agree with some of them I don't agree with the reason I'm doing this video is because I I really enjoy this game and I want to provide my review, but in a unique way that talks about other people's reviews. The game's been out for, I think, two weeks now. I've only got 70 hours into the game, plus 200 hours into the beta as well. So, I know what I'm talking about. I also like to think I'm quite good as well, but, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just going to like read through parts of these reviews and say whether I agree with this person's opinion or disagree. There's quite a lot to go through, I'm not going through them all. But yeah, and this will be a review of the multiplayer. I've got no interest in the campaign of any game, um, apart from Total War, Civilization. I, I, I never really play a campaign. So this is all about the multiplayer side, and let's go. So let's just start off with a one on here. The balance and map design for this game is abysmal, says this person. I'm not trying to hate on any of these commenters, by the way. Um, yeah, yes. You know, if that's your opinion, that is your opinion, but I am I disagree, and I'm saying that I disagree for people who are watching this review. Um, I want to know an arguing opinion sort of thing, so that's how this video is going to work. I, I disagree uh, with this comment. The, the balance is, they are, is something that they are working on and do need to work on. Um, it is, in my opinion, good overall. It's I wouldn't call it abysmal. Um, it's good. It still needs a lot of work. Um, the thing is that it is unbalanced at the start of the game. For example, let's use Vikings and Slavs. Um, the Slavs have swordsmen, the Vikings have spearmen. So, in the first five minutes of this game, the Slavs beat the Vikings because they're just their units are better, so they slaughter them. But when you get into the middle part of the game, the second age, or, yeah, second age, um, the Vikings get axemen, whereas the the Slavs, they only have uh, swordsmen and expensive uh, spearmen. I think they've made a few changes lately, so, yeah. This review, um, of course, was uploaded very close to release, so, of course, a lot of changes are going to be made down the line. Not all, not everything I say might apply by the time you watch this. Yeah, so then, when you get into the middle game, the Vikings have quite a good advantage, and they're able to push back, and then as the game le gets later on, then the Slavs are actually stronger again. But then, when you get right to the end of the game, I think I would say the Vikings are better overall um, at the end of the game. So then, yeah, it's got some factions you play against the clock, um, as one person said. You've got a certain amount of time. If you lose too much at the start, then you're gone. But if you just hold on to a little bit, then you can make quite a good comeback if you choose. Um, well, with any faction, can make a good comeback against any others if you've got uh, the time, if you survive at the start. Um, map design, I, I love the map design. Um, if anyone wants to post their own review down in the comment section as well, feel free to do that. If I mention any of your reviews and you want to argue my argument, then yeah, by all means do that as well. Um, <laughs> they ha I think they have made RTS games before. Um, they do have a Discord page as well, and they are working very close with the uh, community as well to make this game as good as possible with bug fixes and uh, stuff like that. Yes, there are bugs right now, and every game has bugs. It's only been out two weeks, so what can you really expect? Um, in terms of bugs, it's not that bad right now. Um, it was in some phases of the beta, it was. There were some difficulties, but most of them are fixed now. Um, it's not Rome 2 Tilt to War. It's better than that. That's, that's a good thing. Every map um, is a series of um, choke points, I think he's trying to get, um, that allow archers to murder anything behind the front line. <sighs> Can't you just redraft a comment? <laughs> I read through my review about six times. Um, 
Actual spam is a problem in this game. The developers are working on it. Um, oh, this one was actually posted today as well. Um, where is it? No, but it's not full of chalk points and things like that. Um, there's a lot of open space on this game where you can just like flank around and do stuff. There are a lot of chalk points in key areas um, which can be used to a defender's advantage but there still are a lot of spa open spaces. Um, there's one map, what, it, what is it, Burnt and Ruined or something like that. That's very like tight and closed off a lot of bridges. But then there's other ones like Deceptive Calm, which is almost entirely 100% open. And then there's maps in the middle as well that are just a, a bit of both. Some lean towards the more open side, some are the more closed choke point side. Um, this one I hate to see. The game has no comeback me mechanics. It, it does have comeback me mechanics. Um, a lot of people don't know how to use it because they're not good enough. Um, I don't like to phrase it like that, but it's true. Um, you can come back at this game. I've done it before. I've had it done before to me as well by lots of players. It's all about, as I said, playing against the time. You've got if you have an advantage at the start, then that means you're going to have a disadvantage by the end with units. So you've got to bear that in mind when going into battle. If you first, if you play your first ever game, no, you're not going to be able to probably come back because you don't know how to play. Um, that's the truth. You do need a lot of practice, which I will be doing some tutorials later on as well. Uh, yeah, you, you do need practice, but when you get to an actual good stage, when you start to put a lot of hours into it, get get an understanding of the game, then you do realise that comebacks are possible. I've got no idea how how much in-game time this person has. Um, don't know. Yeah, sword speed spares, but then what... Yeah, but then what the spare person has is Vega Axeman in the second age, which beat the swords. And then it, it's like, what, what are they called? Those things in parks. Um, uh, oh, what are they called? Um, you sit on one end and it goes down, and then if someone fatter sits on the other end, it goes back up. Edit all that part out. Um, this game is not something I would recommend, says this person here. Uh, that, that's perfectly fine. If you don't recommend it, then... You know, that, yeah, yeah, comment whatever you want. Um, I would recommend it personally. Um, I think if you just, if you put more practice into the game, actually thought about it a lot more, maybe, maybe you did, I, I could be completely wrong. Um, but yeah, if you did, maybe you might be able to. Um, it, it might have had a different view of the game. Because I, I thought quite similar to this when I started playing as well, but once I uh, got better at the game and started to get used to it a bit more, I disagree with most of what he said here. Apparently the, multi the multiplayer scene is completely dead, that's just near. Look, this is my friends list right now. Um, only three of them are on, but usually all of these people are on, almost all of these people are online for most of the time. I have 69 hours in. Lots of these people have around 50 hours in as well. Sorry for showing those people there if you didn't want them to be shown, but... Yeah. So... <laughs> uh, a, a comment... A, eh, a positive one. So, not bad. If you enjoy Praetorians, I loved Praetorians. Good game. It does remind me a lot of that. It, it said, a lot of people say it reminds them of Company of Heroes as well. It also reminds me a bit of Rise and Fall. So it's a bit of all three of them, but much better. Um, I won't go through all of this. Um, um, this person expected more on the graphics and cutscenes. Uh, cutscenes he's on about with, uh, like the campaign. Graphics, I, I think they're quite good. You've seen gameplay on my channel more than likely. Um, or, or maybe not. Um, I, I like the graphics and it has a good zooming thing as well. Um, actually, I can't find a complaint with the graphics, so... Just like choosing random sentences, by the way. Um, yeah, this person likes the campaign. Um, I'm not 
much of a campaign guy in anything, so I can't really say for the campaign. Alright, th this is someone I know, um, kind of. Um, he streams on Twitch as well. Um, you know what, I'll link him in the description. Um, replayable, yes, definitely replayable. Fluid gameplay, yep. Amazing graphics, yep. Uh, forgiving for beginners. Um, yeah. <laughs> it depends what it means by that. Uh, direct connection, as far as I know, no idea what it means by that. Um, tie turners are a thing, you don't lose after one misplay. Yeah, this is a very big point which I cannot stress enough. It's not over in the first two minutes, you can change things around mid-game and all of that sort of stuff. You can change the tide, um, it's not uh, impossible to come back. Um, yeah, so, just, I want to make that clear. Get used to the game and you'll find out how. Now, it does list some problems, lack of maps, yep, this is something I uh, do agree with, there's 10 maps in total, um, if you if you play them on competitive, uh, there's quite a lot to learn about the maps, um, but they can get they can get repetitive at times. Um, I think more maps will be coming in. Well, more maps will be coming um, from what I hear in Discord anyway, at least um, in DLC. Um, whether that's free or cost, they haven't really said anything yet. It's going to cost. That's the world we live in, but I can't really speak for that as I don't know. Um, but I like how many maps I've got right now. Four 1v1s, three 2v2s, and three 3v3s. But also the 2v2s you can turn into 1v1s if you do a private match, so there's... Yeah, there's a bit more to it there. Needs a couple more infantry units. This is one that I have to disagree with. Um, there's not many different unit variations in this game, but, but that's because it doesn't need them. Um... That, that's a simple thing. It works as a very, like, uh, rock, paper, scissors sort of thing. There's some random person spinning round outside with his dog. Right, he's gone now. That was that was incredibly weird. Um, yeah, it's like a rock, paper, scissors sort of thing with the units. Like, this one beats this one, this one beats this one. And it works around in a circle. If you add other units to that, then it starts to shake it a little bit. What will be good is more unit designs. Um, like, for example, the, the Vikings have um, a Spearman, for example, who... It's a very defensive style of Spearman, um, but that can move fast. What I'd like to see is a different type of Spearman, one that's a little bit more offensive. It's still a Spearman unit, but a bit more af aggressive. There's a German, like, cleaver unit, which is meant to be like an Axeman sort of unit. Um, they're quite aggressive units, but what I'd like is... Maybe have an axeman that's weaker, but more aggressive. I don't think it needs more units in, like, um, a unit with a mace, or, uh, like, cav some cavalry with swords, some cavalry with spears, like how Total War does it, and things like that. I think it, it, it's a weird one. It's Yeah, there's, there's a bit of discussion on Discord about this one. Map isn't clear with regards to objective villages. Yeah, the map's a bit. The map is a little bit off, and there's no ranked uh, yet. And he he says yeah, and I definitely say yeah. That will be coming. I think it's going to be an elo system, but I'm not a hundred percent certain. Uh, he gives the eight out of ten, um, and he would recommend it to any RTS player. I agree with that as well. Um, I, I will say nine out of ten, and with a few. Uh, with a few patches and in time, I think this could be a 10 out of 10 game. I really enjoy this game like nothing I've ever enjoyed before. Last time I've really cared about something this much in a game was Civilization V uh, a few years ago. And before that, that was about 10 years ago with Warrior King's Battles, my first ever RTS game. And Rise and Fall as well, but yeah. So th th this game is one that I'm really enjoying, and that's why I'm making this video, because I, I I want more players to be there. The multiplayer is not dead, but I'm, I am a little bit worried that um, if they don't market the game enough, it could start losing a bit of interest, and that's why I'm, that's kind of why I'm, 
Uh, not doing my job for them. They are doing a good job for devs, by the way. But I'm, I, I want to talk about this game. I want to get more people playing it. And through YouTube is, I think, a good way to do it. This is a great game. Worth it at full price. Uh, yeah, can't agree more with that. Um, let's get another negative one. I will probably end up changing my review later on. Good, I like it when people say stuff like that. Um, that is on about campaigns where players as each faction is strategies, and it's straightforward. <laughs> I highly disagree with straightforward. Um, it is, of course, very straightforward when you have 9.3 hours in the game. Um, that is a that's completely different to 50 hours in the game. There's just so much detail to every unit. I'm still learning things to this day, and I've got over 250 hours into it by now, if we include the beta. Um, today, for example, I just learned how how powerful it is to get into defensive formation and feel a charge hit you right in the face with a with the exact like mirrored unit, like swordsman versus swordsman. When they charge, it hits you, and they they have like a charge block thing. I knew it caused a few issues, but I didn't know it was as deadly as I figured out today. I'm still learning so much every single day, and with constant patches, it's constantly changing it slightly as well. Um, it, it's good. Yeah, a uh, lot of good screenshots in nice angles. There's a way how you can zoom in and see it. Uh, more in like a third person mode for screenshots and stuff. You can't make commands in a third person mode. Um, but yeah, you can change the angle around and it's good. Be good for YouTubers to like get screenshots and stuff like that. Yeah, it, it just needs more. Um, although I think it is a good game as it is. It does still always need more. They have talked about including mods. I don't really know too much about that right now, um, but they have said that they are making some plans on Discord. Um, I, yeah, all, all my ideas of what I know in the future is just coming from stuff I've heard mentioned in Discord by the developers and other people. <laughs> Very shallow. I I I have to disagree with that point as well. It's it's the same again, 11.6 hours. It's a game that is easy to learn, but there's so much more hours required for mastery. That's, that's how I'm done to put it. There's lots of unit, unit mechanics, um, although they're not exactly things you've got to click on. There's things that you've got to do, like certain flanking manoeuvres around other units, uh, catching them off guard, each do different amounts of damage. Um, so I disagree with that. <laughs> no, it's not game over. Because then what you've got to do is you've got to rush level 2 instead. You don't have to spam the weak unit. There's no reason why you've got to do that. Why don't you just instead use your resources, go into level 2, rush you out, and then you've got units all of a sudden that are better than what they spam. So then you're spamming a better unit, but then they'll end up eventually spamming it again. So then it's like the, it's like the seesaw thing again. Yeah, at the start you will be a settlement behind, but then because you've got the better units you'll easily catch up. You might become two settlements ahead. But then they don't get the better stuff, and they don't become three settlements ahead, and then you're going to get the better stuff again, and then, yeah, that's how it works. Okay, this person apparently always wins because he chooses the faction that beats him in the early game. I'm curious to know what type of players he's been playing. Of course, if you play level 1s who are very new to the game, it's going to be a much different story if you play like top tier players, uh, like me. <laughs> um, which is kind of true, but some people will disagree, but whatever. Yeah, you know what, 1v1 me. Yeah, you know, I don't want to hit on any of these Steam people here, but 1v1 me, you can choose whatever faction you want, you can choose my faction, and I will win. 
anyone with 11.6 hours, I can win. Bit a beat for the for better phrase, but yeah. Uh, four choosable nations, yep. Um, oh, of course, some people say there's only four. Uh, four works well right now, and I'm sure there'll be more in DLC. It's not a game that really needs like five right now because of how it plays. Ah, oh, good, a lot of positive ones there. Uh, Yeah, so this person thinks it's a bit like Company of Heroes and Age of Empires. Never played Company of Heroes, so I can't say for that one. Played Age of Empires. I prefer this to Age of Empires. Age of, a <laughs> Age of Empires fans might hate me for saying that, but I do. Um, then again, it, I've never really been much of an Age of Empires person. Don't know why, just never was. So, yeah. Let's check out the negative ones, I think, because I think I can talk more about those. Uh, than the positive ones. Eh, uh, just this person's opinion of this. Well, of course, I've only got 3.9 hours into the game. Hmm. If you don't like the game, then of course you don't like the game. No problem there. Um. But I just want to say that I do disagree. It feels like the AI cheats. Um, the insane AI does cheat. The rest of them, I think, is just uh, like the normal AI, I think. Um, the AI is um, quite smart. I, I can beat the AI easily, of course, because I'm brilliant at everything. Um, but... To new players, the AI can seem a bit difficult. Easy AI, I would recommend players to uh, start off with. And uh, yeah, if anyone wants to tutorial of this game, by the way, I am planning on doing one. But if people start requesting it in the comment section, then I'll, I'll push it as more of a priority in my list of videos. And the game isn't so much strategy as it is outnumbering your enemy's blob of units with it, uh, with your own. Ugh. Another comment I have to completely disagree with. 8.6... You know what, comment whenever you want, I can't really. I don't feel I should complain there, but... I disagree, is all I'm going to say. Which is basically what I've said throughout this entire 20 minute video, but I'll, I'm trying to just get my opinion of the game across. Yes, having a blob of units is going to give you an advantage. Let's say you have... Let's say you have two Spearman units, and... No, let, let's say you have one Spearman unit, and the enemy has two. Of course the enemy will beat you, you're outnumbered, that's just how war works, but... If you use your second one, instead of getting it into combat, you can, like, flank around, not hit the unit, walk past them, disrupt the enemy nearby village, cut off food resources, and you can starve them to death, which will then lower the morale of the two spearmen you're fighting, and then all of a sudden, your one spearman can take out those two spearmen easily, because the other two squads are starving to death, and your one, well, one squad, each squad is made up of ten. Um, it's not like Age of Empires, where it's just each individual unit. But yeah, you, you can win the battle, so there's a lot of strategy involved. It's not about blobs. Blobs help, but it's not all about the blob. Which is a sentence I never thought I would say. Right, this person is mentioning the rock, paper, scissors thing. Um, there are three types of infantry, spear, warriors, axe warriors, oh, yeah, swords and board warriors. Is that a clue what board warriors are? Yeah. Oh, sword and shield. Um, yeah, rather. And as mentioned, they function as a rock, paper, scissor thing. Oh, wow. Well. Right, and he thinks it's streamlined because of this. Um, 
perhaps in in a way, but it's 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 like you rotate onto the next unit, but you can't just abandon all the swordsmen because you still do need some swordsmen if they come at you with spearmen. If they come at you with axemen, you're gonna need spearmen, which is rock paper scissors thing. But still, you need a little bit of each one, and the position you place them in is incredibly important. If you've got, let's say, three swordsmen and one spearman, it can go north and south. Um, and you need to send two south, and you've got to send two north. If they have cavalry, you've got to try and figure out which way the enemy is going to send the cavalry. If they're going to send their cavalry north, then you need to send a swordsman and a spearman north. Whereas if, and, and your two swordsmen south, whereas if they're going south, it's the other way around, you need your spearmen to counter the cavalry. If that, yeah, that makes sense. So it's, I wouldn't use the word streamlined, it is, the rock, paper system, the, the rock, paper, scissors system is, of course, uh, very basic in its idea, we all know what rock, paper, scissors is, I assume. Um, which is, I think, what the developers were going for, something like clear, swordsmen beat spears, spears beat cavalry, cavalry beat archers, that sort of thing. Um, but there's just so much more to it, and streamlined is definitely uh, not the word that I would use. And then, bam, it ends. Uh, this person seems to have lost excitement. Thinks it was average. Entire game feels like a copy and paste of Praetorians, which had way more to offer. Um, I think this game has more to offer. Um, I'll only talk about the multiplayer, of course. I think it's probably got yeah, it's got more campaigns as well. Um, the multiplayer just got so much more to it that you don't really notice with only like sixteen. Actually, sixteen point one hours is uh, quite a lot compared to most people here, but. With these small amount of hours, it, it requires time to get used to, um, which I think is a good thing. Um, I hated Total War Attila when I first got it. I thought it was the worst game ever because I didn't understand it, but I didn't know that was the reason at the time. And I, I kept on playing Attila because I wanted to like the game, and I yeah, really kept on playing it. And now I would say it's one of my favourite Total War games just because of how it plays. I'm um, even though I say it's probably better than Rome 1 and Medieval 2. People will hate me at that, but I love Attila because I got I got used to it really well and I enjoy the game so much now. And I think that's what Ancestors Legacy um, will be for some people. It's it's something that you need to you just need to play. Uh Quite a few games as well, just try loads of different tactics, play with your friends as well. Um, 2v2s, just try everything, just keep on going out. And you'll, you'll find strategies that you like, strategies you don't like. You can use that, you can start getting wins, you can start ranking up. Um, second in the world, by the way, if you look at the leaderboards. Woo! And I think I'm first in the world with the Vikings as well. Might have lost that by... No, I think I'm still first. But yeah, it, it needs it needs time. This game is the most interesting I've ever played. Um, in my opinion. Overpriced. Um Yeah. Okay, I, I I've got to admit, if there's any uh negative comment um I had to make about this game, it would be the price. Um it's about thirty pounds. I got it for about twenty five pounds because I got it ten percent discount. Uh, when it was as a pre-order sort of thing, because uh, I played a beta and I liked a beta. £30. Mm, £30 for the full game and free DLC would be, like, brilliant. Um, but I don't think they're going to go that way. If I'm going to have to pay for DLC as well, then it, it depends how they do it and what the price are at. £30... For me, £30 for the multiplayer was worth it. I, I don't play the campaigns, I, I just buy it for multiplayer. Um, if you like the campaigns, then that also adds to its value as well. Um, I would have preferred it to have been 
25 pounds and then i got about 10 percent off so uh if you pre-order it you got 10 percent off so that would have taken it down to 20 pounds that would have been a better price i think but you know at least it's not 80 pounds could have been worse but yeah this this is one negative opinion i do have to say i do agree with not that I think it's one that can be changed. There'll of course be sales, and that's how Steam works. You just buy things when we go on sale. Um, but I, I don't know if it will like sale. Of course, I I am not a developer. Um, I've spoken to them in Discord, but I've read what was said in Discord as well and on Facebook. But eh, I I, I don't know. I, I don't think I can really comment too much there. Uh, right, because I can't really say much about the campaigns. I'm I think he's on about campaigns mostly. Tactics is not shallow in this game. Um, not at all challenging. 1v1 me. Um, <laughs> I put that on my written review as well. Just 1v1 me at the end of it. <laughs> uh. Where was I? Some unit types... Really? Cavalry feel useless? Um, if you charge them into spears every time, then yeah, I guess, but... Cavalry is a very powerful tool, but also very expensive as well. Uh, like, like in Total War, in a way. Um, yeah, trust me, I would not say cavalry is useless. If anything, cavalry is one of the most overpowered things that probably could do have been tweaked a little bit to be a bit weaker especially in early game because if slavs rush cavalry instead of swordsmen yeah that could look bad uh questionable unit ai i don't play much against ai but yeah yeah the, the ai is the ai what more can you really expect um from what i've seen it it does it can get a bit repetitive it can spam units and it does struggle with food the ai is far from perfect but um it i think it's a brilliant campaign i, I don't really play a campaign I, I i just did the tutorial just to see how it was uh, i will someday like do another campaign um but yeah don't have time now uh this person believes it fails miserably um he believe or she believes it's I don't know. Um, it's not worth the money and is giving <laughs> the RTS genre a bad reputation. When I read this comment, I get the feeling that this person has fought against me before and lost horribly. <laughs> um, I, I really do disagree with this. I think it's a very good RTS game. It's quite different as well with the way how the buildings work and the villages. Um, it's very different to Praetorians Rise and Fall, and I, I don't know about Company of Heroes because I've never played it, but it is very different, even though it shares a lot of similar similarities. Its economic system is very unique. Um, I love its building system as well, very unique as well. Um, its building system is a bit like, uh, what's it called, Battle for Middle Earth. I've, I've only seen videos of it, never played it, so I can't say too much there either, but yeah, its building system is more like, it, it's quite a lot like that now, I think about it as well. Uh, just from what I've seen on YouTube, but without heroes. There's talk that they're adding heroes in, I, I don't know if it's going to happen. Huh. One of the purchases they regret. Um, online play is trash, in this person's opinion, and unbalanced. Um, I very highly disagree with this comment. Um, that, that's all I have to say. I've talked about the balance quite a lot of time. Yeah, archery is completely broken. I have to agree with that. Archery is very overpowered in this game. Um, and I think it just got worse with um, a recent patch as well. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, archery is a problem. Um, the devs are working on it. And I'm sure they will like come out with fixes very soon. Um, yeah, that, that, that's all I have to say with that. Um, it's very early on in release, so there's always going to be some broken things. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, it can feel like that sometimes. Some people go at archer units only, that's a very cowardly tactic in my opinion. What I hate more than anything is missile cav, whether it's Ancestors Legacy, Age of Empires or Total War, I hate missile cav, I never use them because I find it so cowardly. Um, I, I hate missile cav. Um, <laughs> modern, it feels like modern warfare. Um, yeah, but most players that I come across don't spam archers. Um, there's only a couple that I can name, but I won't name names. Um, but yeah, I do know some people who do spam archers. Um, hopefully that should be something they fix soon. Um, I, I'm sure it will be, because uh, a lot of people have complained about the archer stuff. Yeah, he goes on about the archers. Uh, this person thinks it's about rushing, so there's of course villages that you capture, but there's also a base that you can rush, where you just like annihilate them. Um, I don't think it's all about rushing. Um, oh, far too much, it says. Um, no, I don't think it is. Um, you can rush, um, and that can of course cause some problems. It is cheesy, as it says, um, but it's not too much of a it's not too much of a problem, really. Who's this person been playing against? <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of these uh, negative opinions here, I'm just assuming they've had, like, a really bad experience, tra a traumatic experience of this game versus certain players. <laughs> uh, there are some people who do like to rush very early on. Sometimes it does work, sometimes it doesn't. Um... It's rare I actually see it now. It was a thing in the beta, but I don't, I don't see it anymore. Uh, very rare. Servers are dead, and the game lacks content. It's been out two weeks, and the servers are not dead. There's lots of people online. His name says it all. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I highly uh, disagree with a lot of these negative opinions. But I think I've had a, a, a fair say overall. And yeah, I've shown my opinion and everything. Um, but just look at these reviews. It is mostly positive. I know I've focused on the negative. But that's what I wanted to do. Alright, so I'll talk about what people are saying is bad about this game and provide another argument, which is something that doesn't really, it doesn't really exist in this, uh, like, Steam. You can't really argue someone's opinion, and this doesn't even work correctly, really, but it's, it's as close as I think I'm going to get. Um... Yeah, I think that ends the video. So, Ancestor's Legacy. It is... A, a good game. I really enjoy it. You can see my spiral background there. Really excited for this as well. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very looking forward to Ancestors Legacy uh, in the future as well and what it's going to do in the future. Um, th this game is one that I do really like and I, will, I want to share how much I like it and I also want to provide argument to those who don't like it to say uh, not why they're wrong although they probably are in some cases, but why I disagree and that it's a game that you need to play more to get used to. At times, it does feel like what those people have said. I've had some really bad times with this game, I've got to admit. Um, I, I did come close to refunding it at one point um, because I just... Um, yeah, just because that's how it felt at the time. But... I decided not to, and I'm happy that I didn't, because I just keep getting more used to it every single day. And I still have times now where I go, oh, that's it, I'm, I'm quitting this game. There's something about it that causes a certain rage within the player that makes them want to quit. But also, there's something that makes you want to continue as well. It's, it's weird. Yeah, but I enjoy this game. Um... Of course, I've spoken a lot about it overall. The negatives that I will point out is that, first of all, I'm worried about this game, um, whether it will have enough players. That's partly why I'm doing this video. Um, it's not being promoted 
well, it has been. The devs have done a good job at it, but um, for the size that they have, it is a small company. But um, it needs more players, and I'm sure it will get more players over time. But I think this review should hopefully help make people decide whether they do want this game or not. Um, huh, look, I love it so much, I've got two copies of it. <laughs> One's a beta, by the way. Um, I don't have two copies of the game. Um, the price has come up before. Um, yeah, I I think it could have done with being five pounds off. Um, but as long as they don't make the DLC ridiculous price or anything like that, um, then uh, I don't really mind. I think it's worth it. But yeah, I, I think it's worth it. But it could have uh, it could cause a problem for some people. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, and finally the balance i think it's very balanced um of course once you get used to how you have to rotate around units and stuff like that um arches are still a problem uh that i'm sure that's gonna be fixed soon there's a lot of people mention it on discord um people don't like it uh some people do like it and they they're the type of people who would spam it but yeah anyway hope you enjoyed this video it was a very different review something i've never really done before um if you want to leave your review in the comment section as well or whether you agree or disagree with, with what i've said what i've done or whatever uh finally i don't want to hate on any other people who i re reviewed their review of um yeah you know you all you can all have your own opinion but this is mine and i'm just explaining why it is mine and why I disagree and why I think other people should get this game. Of course, feel free to read all the rest of the reviews in your own time. But this is mine. Hope you've enjoyed and goodbye.